Okay, uh, this is part two of lecture five, and this will be very brief because we don't have very much left to cover. So let's take a look at an isotope. We're looking at thallium-206. So I'm asking you what the atomic number, mass number, number of protons, complete symbol, and name is. Now again, remember you have to have your periodic table open next to you when you are listening to these lectures because otherwise it's going to be horribly confusing and really painful and I highly recommend it. If you have a textbook, um, there's always one either on the front cover, inside cover, or on the inside back cover, usually the back cover. Um, but it's handy to keep a copy of one beside you at all times. Anyway, okay, so we need to look up the, the atomic number for thallium, and that's on your periodic table. The atomic number is 81. The mass number is in the description for the name, thallium-206. The mass number is 206. So we take that 206, subtract the 81 for the atomic number, and um, we would get, let's see, 125 for the number of neutrons, which isn't asked. The number of protons is 81, same as the atomic number, as always. The complete symbol is 206 over 81, and then TL for the symbol, and the name is thallium. Okay, the atomic mass unit is defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom, which is consistent of six protons and six neutrons. Now, I want you to understand that carbon is our base unit of life, which is why we chose it as our standard reference in the periodic table. Each proton and neutron is about one atomic mass unit, or AMU, each. Remember that each isotope has its own atomic mass, and we get the average mass of an element based on the percent abundance. That's why um, the atomic masses aren't just whole numbers. That's why there's decimal points after it. It's because it's an average based on the percent abundance of the different isotopes. So let's practice calculating those averages just to make every sure that everyone's on the same page and can still do that. So here's a, a quick average. You have five rocks, four with a mass of 50 grams, and one with a mass of 60. What is the average mass of the rocks? Well, you take four times 50, add 60, you get 260. Divide it by the total number of objects, which is five. And so your average mass is 52 grams. Another way of looking at it is this way. You can, you can do it in any one of those ways. 0 0.8 times 50 plus 0 0.2 times 60, you could do that. Um, any of those things um, are other ways of doing this problem. You don't have to do it the way I do it. So I want you to practice this one. You're going to calculate the average mass of copper. If copper has two isotopes, 69.11% has a mass of 62.93 AMU, and the rest has a mass of 64.93 AMU. So what you do is you take the 69.11% and you change that to a decimal point, so that's 0 0.6911. Multiply that times 62.93 because that's its mass. Then you add that to the quantity. Um, you have to know how much percentage is left out of 100% and that's 30.89%. So you take 0 0.3089 times 64.93, you add that quantity to the first quantity, and you get an average mass of 63.55 AMU. So you're going to try this one. Magnesium has three isotopes. 78.99% is magnesium-24, which has a mass of 23.985. 10% is magnesium-25 with a mass of 24.986, and the rest is magnesium-26 with a mass of 25.983 AMU. What is the atomic mass of mass magnesium? And this is why atomic masses are not whole numbers, but are averages, and the masses are decimal numbers on the periodic table. Okay. So I want you to go ahead and try this. You're welcome to check your um, math with me, but your answer should be 24.30 AMU. If you did not arrive at that after you've practiced it, you'll need to see me during office hours and I'll be happy to help you. Remember that the periodic table is more than just a list of elements. It is put in columns, which are called groups because of similar properties, and each row is called a period and is organized not only to 
in increasing numbers of protons, but also incre increasing electronegativity. We're going to do more on that later, um, but that's going to conclude lecture five. So make sure that you've practiced with this material and done the quiz on it because it will help you immensely. All right, well, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you on office hours if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.